Steel is an 18 bar chord progression that is fairly complex which makes soloing over it quite difficult, especially at very fast tempos, which Jerry does with flying colors. The song is in the key of A and features uh, a number of non-diatonic chords, chords that are found outside the key of A major. It starts off with a two bar intro that depending on the show can be repeated just a couple times or it can be re can be vamped on for quite a while. Next we have the verse. The verse starts with one bar of A, then one bar of C sharp seven, then we have a half a bar of F sharp minor, a half a bar of A, a half a bar of D7, and a half a bar of E flat diminished seven or D sharp diminished seven. Note that E flat diminished seven and D sharp diminished seven are the same chords. It's just an enharmonic spelling, which means a different spelling for the same set of notes. Then we have a bar of A, another half bar of A, a half bar of F sharp. Then we have a full bar of B and a full bar of D. All right, the next four bars are a repeat of the first four bars of the verse. And then we have what is officially the chorus, which is one bar of A, half a bar of G, and a half a bar of D, and those two bars are repeated. Then we have two bars of A, which serve as an interlude between the chorus and the next verse. And these two bars are present during the solos as well. All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at Jerry Garcia's solo from Deal from the Cornell 5877 show. This is the first part, and we're taking a look at the first chorus. But once we're done with this series, we're going to have all three choruses down. All right, as much fun as it is to learn and play this solo, it's even more important that you learn from the solo. So once you get this down, you know, after, after some time, chances are you won't remember the solo any longer, but you will remember the concepts as long as you internalize them. So that's really what we want to do as we walk through this solo. Kind of figure out the concepts behind it, kind of what... Um, Jerry might have been thinking when he came up with these improvisations and then really learn from them and apply it to our own playing. Um, a quick note about this before we get started. As I mentioned in the intro, some of the chords in this progression are non-diatonic, which mean they fall outside the key of A major, which this song is in. So, a um, couple of things Jerry does. One is he plays out of chord shapes, and you'll see that in this solo. To target specific chord tones and that's especially so when we get to these non-diatonic chords and also in this solo and a lot he uh, uses the A major pentatonic as kind of an anchor point and in earlier solos from earlier years there's times that he used almost entirely the A major pentatonic scale to solo over the song so as long as you um, select the correct notes, you're careful with your choice of notes, the A major pentatonic scale will work over this entire progression. So having that under your fingers as well as um, the chord shapes, you can really get a lot of mileage out of those two elements alone as you'll see that Jerry did. Alright, so we're starting off in the um, we're ninth position and we're kind of out of this A shape. We're starting on the, um, we're beginning on an A chord. And if you take a look at this uh, C shaped cage shape, we have our A chord. And also look at the A major pentatonic right there. We can start here on the 12th fret of the fifth string. We have our A major pentatonic, or if you do more of a horizontal approach. So with that in mind, <clears throat> we're starting off on the and of three. So we have one, two, three. So these are the notes out of the A major pentatonic scale. So we're starting on 
the ninth fret of the third string, that's an E, the fifth of A. Then we're pulling off from the eleventh fret to the ninth fret of the third string, and playing the eleventh fret of the fourth string, C sharp, that's the major third of A. You can see that A chord. Now this next chord is a C sharp seven. And this is one of our non-diatonic chords. So what Jerry's doing is he's um, targeting chord tones. Alright, let's take a look at a C sharp seven arpeggio. We're starting on the ninth fret of the sixth string, eighth fret of the fifth, eleventh fret of the fifth string, nine to eleven on the fourth, tenth fret of the third, nine twelve on the second, and then 9-13 on the first. So that's a C-sharp 7 arpeggio, so all those are chord tones out of the C-sharp 7 chord. So he hammers from the 9th fret to the 10th fret of the 3rd string. That's the flat 3rd to the major 3rd. Then he plays the 9th fret of the 2nd string, that's the 5th. Then he descends down the uh, C sharp 7 arpeggio. So we have, we're playing the 5th, the 3rd, the root, and then the flat 7. So that's 9th fret of the 2nd, 10th fret of the 3rd, 11th fret of the 4th, 9th fret of the 4th. So, so far we have this. 1, 2, 3, Alright, then we're going to slide from the 9th fret of the 4th string up to the 11th fret of the 4th. So that's a C sharp, and that's the 5th um, of the F sharp minor chord we're now playing over. And let's take a look at the A major scale starting on the 12th fret of the 5th string. So that's 12th fret of the 5th. 9, 11, 12 on the 4th, 9, 11 on the 3rd, 9, 10 on the 2nd. So after we slide up to the 11th fret of the 4th string, we're going to play the 10th fret of the 2nd string, A, that's the flat 3rd of the F sharp minor chord. Then we're just going to walk down the a major scale, so we have 9th fret of the 2nd string, 11 pull off 9, <clears throat> and we're skipping the D. So it's basically this part is the A major scale and then we're staying in um, A major pentatonic territory. Then we're going to hammer on from the 9th to the 11th fret of the 3rd string, 9th fret of the 3rd, then slide from the 11th fret to the 9th fret on the 4th. <clears throat> Then we're going to pull off from the ninth to the seventh fret of the fourth, and then play that note two more times. So that is a major pentatonic. So this is what we have so far. One, two, three. Alright, so over this D sharp diminished or E flat diminished seventh chord, um, Jerry kind of has two approaches. He'll either play out of the A major pentatonic scale. There's two notes in the A major pentatonic scale that are chord tones. That's the um, A that we just played and then the F sharp. So you can um, either just focus on those two notes or as we'll see later, he'll play the arpeggio. So here's an E flat diminished seven or D sharp diminished seven arpeggio. That's the thirteenth fret of the fourth string, eleventh fret of the third, ten, thirteen on the second, and the eleventh fret of the first. All right, moving right along. We're still out of the A major pentatonic scale. We're going to hammer on from the 7th to the 9th fret of the 5th string. 
And then the seventh fret of the fourth string, so we have. Then we play the seventh fret again of the fourth string, but this is note is played. It's kind of a ghost note. It's played lighter, not as loud as the last note. Then we're going to slide from the ninth to the eleventh fret of the fourth string. Play the ninth fret of the third string twice, and the eleventh fret of the fourth. Then we have the tenth fret of the uh, second string. 11 pull off 9 on the 3rd, 11th fret of the 4th. And then we're going to, now we're over an F sharp major chord. So we're going to slide from the 9th fret, I mean the 10th fret of the 3rd string up to the 15th fret, and then play the 14th fret of the 2nd string. So that's targeting the 3rd and the 5th of an F sharp major chord. And that's what I believe Jerry intended to do. What he actually did was slide up to the 16th fret of the 3rd and hit the 16th fret of the 3rd and the 15th fret of the 2nd. So he just overshot it by a fret. But, you know, the goal of this learning this solo is not to, you know, recreate his, you know, mistakes, but to learn from it. So that would make sense is to play the uh, third and the fifth of an F sharp major chord. All right, so let's take a, let's listen to those two bars. We have one, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, now we're over a B chord. So if you take a look at this B arpeggio, starting on the 14th fret of the fifth string, we have 14th fret of the fifth, 13th fret of the fourth, then we have the 16th frets of the fourth, third, and second strings, uh, 14th fret of the first, and you can play the uh, 19th fret of the first as well. And that's our B arpeggio. Then if we add the fourth right there, that's the E, that's the 14th fret of the fourth string, that's the note he starts on. He pulls off to the 13th fret of the 4th string, plays the 14th fret of the 5th string twice. So he has... So it's the 4th, 3rd, root. Then the 13th fret of the 4th string again, back to the 14th fret of the 5th string, and then back to the 13th fret of the 4th string. Now he's going to slide from the 14th fret of the 4th string up to the 16th fret of the 4th string. So we have... Alright, so now we're playing over a D chord. So if you take a look at this shape right here, based off of that C cage shape, see a D chord. So what he did was he slid into that 16th fret of the 4th string, which is an F sharp. That's the 5th uh, of B, but now it's the major 3rd of D. And now that we land on a D chord, B1, he starts off with the root, so that's the 15th fret of the 2nd string, back to the 16th fret, so that's the root to the major 3rd, then again root to the major 3rd. Second time, he doesn't quite hit the note, it's more just a muted note. And then he's going to slide from the 13th fret of the 1st string to the 14th fret. So the flat 3rd to the major 3rd. And then the root, 15th fret of the 2nd. So we have... So B to D sounds like this. Then we slide up 2 frets, or move up 2 frets. And we have the 17th fret of the 2nd string. That's an E. In the 18th fret of the 3rd string, C sharp, we're now playing over an A chord, so we have our 5th and our major 3rd. So again, we play 17th fret of the 2nd to 18th fret of the 3rd, and we do that twice. The second time, again, it's kind of a muted note. Then we have the 17th fret of the 2nd string twice again. Then we're going to slide from the... 
um, 18th fret of the 3rd string to the 16th fret and then pull off to the 14th. So that is the A major pentatonic scale. So those two bars sound like this, or that one bar sounds like this. Alright, now we're over a C sharp 7 chord. So again, if we look at this C sharp arpeggio, what Jerry does is slides from the 9th fret to the 11th fret of the 4th string, so that's the flat 7 to the root, and then he plays the 10th fret of the 3rd string, the major 3rd, then the 9th fret of the 1st string, the root, then the 12th fret of the second string, the flat 7, then back to 9th fret of the 1st string, 12th fret of the 2nd. So we have... Those two measures together sound like this. Alright, now we have our F sharp minor, A, D7, E flat diminished 7 progression. So he um, starts off by sliding from the 9th fret to the 10th fret of the 2nd string. So you think of our A major scale. We're just sliding from the G sharp up to the A. And then we're going to pull off from the 10th to the 9th fret. Then we do that again. And then play the 11th fret of the 3rd string, 9th fret of the 2nd, 11th fret of the 3rd. Then we have 9th fret of the 3rd, 11th fret of the 4th, 9th fret of the 3rd, 11th fret of the 4th. Slide down to the 9th, pull off to the 7th. This is our A major pentatonic scale. And we're landing on that A note for the E flat diminished 7 or D sharp diminished 7 chord, which is a chord tone. So we have Then we're going to play the 9th fret of the 4th string and slide that into the 11th fret of the 4th. All right, so we're landing on a C sharp, our major third of our A chord. Then we're going to play the ninth fret of the third string twice, eleventh fret of the fourth, then hammer on from nine to eleventh of the third, and tenth fret of the second. So we have three, four. All right, now we have our G to D chord. So if you can see what we just did is playing over this A shape and we moved that down two frets. We have our G and if you think of a G cage shape we have a D chord. So A, G, D and look at the smaller fragments. So we have and we're gonna play So we're just following the chords. So we have our root, then we're playing the root of our G chord, 8th fret of the 2nd, playing that again, but the, playing that again, then the 7th fret of the 2nd uh, string, which is our F sharp. So we have the A, root of an A chord, G, root of the G chord, F sharp, which is the major third of a D. And play that note again, but this time it's kind of muted. So we have this right here. So then the ninth fret of the fourth, slide to the eleventh fret of the fourth. So again, we're playing over an A chord. We have our major third to our root. Then we have the tenth fret sliding into the eleventh fret of the fourth string. Then ten, eleven and the 9th fret of the 3rd string twice. Then we have the 10th fret of the 2nd string, 12th fret of the 4th, 12th fret of the 3rd twice, and the 11th fret of the 3rd. Then 11, 12, 13, then we're going to land on the 14th fret of the 3rd string, which is an A. 
So this is what we have. So those four measures all together sound like this. Alright, so now we have our two measure A interlude. So we just landed on our A, our root, then we're going to slide from the 12th to the 14th fret of our third string. Now we're changing positions, so we're sliding with our index finger, and we're sliding from the flat 7 to the root. Then we have the 14th fret of the 4th string, which is our E, our 5th. Then the 15th hammer onto the 16th of the 5th string, so that's our flat 3rd to major 3rd then our 14th fret of the 4th string. Then we're going to pull off from the 16th to the 15th fret of the 5th string, and then pull off from 15th to 14th, and slide to the 12th, and play the 12th two more times, and then we're going to play the 14th fret of the 3rd string, and then slide that into the 18th fret, which will be the first note of our second chorus, and that will be in the next part. So those two measures sound like this. Alright, so let me play the whole thing slowly. Let me throw on my metronome, see if you can hear that. So I'm going to play this at um, 85 BPM. One, two, three. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this part. Can't wait to see you in part two.